Okay. Um, right now, our next um, next speaker. So we have two speakers um, in the next session. Um, this is uh, a local uh, pair of speakers. Um, so we've got Carolyn Hamilton and Matthew Kirky from Digital Victoria. So uh, Digital Victoria is an initiative set up by the Victorian government to drive digital transformation across government and to drive uh, digital ways of connecting for business and for citizens with the state government. Uh, so I want you to uh, help me welcome Carolyn and Matthew to talk about uh, the, uh, the new API marketplace that they're uh, setting up in Victoria. Thank you. Thanks, Saul. I have to confess I was one of those maniacs running around with the Pokemon Go game um, when that came out on the app. It was a great way to meet people, actually. It was good fun. It was great. Uh, so, yes, we're here to talk today about accelerating connected data initiatives to drive economic outcomes. Um, I'm the Acting Executive Director within Digital Design and Innovation, uh, which is a branch within Digital Victoria. And with me, Matthew Kirky is the Product Manager for um, a new platform, the API Marketplace. Um, before we continue, I'd like to uh, acknowledge the traditional owners of the land uh, on which uh, we meet, and particularly um, the Bunurong country uh, from where I'm speaking, and uh, acknowledge elders past and present, any elders who might be joining us with this session today. Um, hopefully you haven't had too many definitions of application programming interface because you may be getting your first or tenth one. Um, and for the techies among you, I apologise. Uh, we just don't like to assume that uh, everyone in business uh, is up with the digital jargon these days. I know it annoys um, our stakeholders immensely when we don't plan English things. Um, but basically, organisations can standardise the way that systems connect and interact with their data. Um, and the goal is to implement uh, this connection once and then give access to many different users uh, instead of customising connections for each user. This dramatically cuts down on the costs and opens up the ability for people um, to create new use cases and it can help drive innovation and growth. So if you think about your standard electric PowerPoint as a provider API, the provider API specification is that to plug in and charge up any of your devices, your device needs to be able to accept 240 volts of electricity. If this is the standard, then anyone who's making appliances everywhere, can, can they can create many different devices that can also be charged up using the same PowerPoint. So it's a simple analogy for what APIs enable, but when thinking about APIs, think about the digital solutions that need to plug in to safely and securely consume data. So Victoria is committed um, to supporting the digital economy. The Victorian government recognises that an effective digital economy will enhance ordinary Victorians' lives by driving productivity, creating jobs, encouraging inclusive growth and supporting new business opportunities. As such, Victoria's invested in a range of entities with a substantial role in supporting the digital economy, including Invest Victoria and LaunchVic. But there's also a role for government to increase open data sets that are available to businesses and to make it easier for small to medium-sized businesses to consume government information, to share information back to government, to connect with other business systems and to create new services. Because of this, the Victorian government has also invested in its connected data and API infrastructure. It's made this investment because it recognises the power of this technology to drive transformation and innovation in how government operates. It's also recognised the opportunity that easier discovery and access to open APIs um, could have to grow the digital economy. And this has led to some criti critical initiatives already, such as the DataVic platform. So this platform makes it easier for developers within government and the community to discover, access and use government data um, to create innovative and useful products. 
Um, a second initiative has been the whole of Victorian Government API Gateway. So this has had an extremely successful first year of operations and it's contributed to several major digital initiatives across the state. One you'll be very familiar with by now, sadly, um, where the Gateway has supported COVID-19 response on the Victorian Government QR code check-in service. And through APIs, we're enabling secure data sharing between the check-in service and Department of Health contact tracers. Uh, the Gateway has also supported the Department of Jobs, Precincts and Regions COVID-19 relief by enabling identity verification requests um, through integration with the Commonwealth Department of Home Affairs. And another example is where the Gateway is supporting other departments to transition legacy services to reusable APIs. A third is the developer.vic portal. This provides the tools and resources for application developers to connect their applications with data from a range of government departments and selected government partners. So, comes to um, Digital Victoria, currently all three of these initiatives are operating within Digital Victoria. Um, so this group has been created to transform the experience of government for all Victorians through innovation. The triple goals are better equitable and more accessible services for Victorians, a digital ready public sector and a thriving digital economy. And the API marketplace that we're talking to you about today is part of that focus, the third goal of supporting a thriving digital economy. We know we can help to reduce the barriers for Victorian businesses to start up, thrive and grow through things like digital marketplaces and op options for partnerships with government to create new digital solutions for Victorians' problems. This is something that we've had success in the past with. Um, over time, we've built the single digital presence, um, which is a shared online publishing platform built by government for government. Um, the Engage Vic platform, so this is an online public consultation platform and it makes it easy for government to collect community feedback on policies and projects and strategies. Um, a business insights platform that enables whole of Victorian government anal analysis of citizen um, sentiment and what their needs are. Then we have the API Gateway and Data Vic. All of these solutions started with a common problem. Once we had validated the problem, we designed and delivered a minimum viable product as a proof of concept. And often we've done this in partnership um, with industry partners um, and hopefully as much as possible from Victoria. Um, and we've got the, uh, the concept in use early. And once it's in use, we've tested with it, we've learned from our testing and we've improved it. After the cycles of test and learn, we confirm that we can go to scale. This is approach that's been successful for us and we believe it's worth repeating. This takes us to the API marketplace. Matthew's going to talk you through the research that was done um, around the problem and uh, talk you further through the API marketplace itself. Matt. Thanks, Carolyn. Hi, everyone. I'm Matthew Kirky, the product manager for the API marketplace. I'm not sure if anyone caught the keynote talk yesterday, but Mike gave a really great playback of the history of computing and what the future looks like regarding APIs and connected services and economies, which hit extremely close to home on how we designed the API marketplace concept. So similar to Mike's keynote address, when we were brainstorming what ways government could help grow the digital economy, we wondered if history could inform a digital approach. So about a year and a half ago, we had a thought experiment about government, history, marketplaces, and technology. And historically, marketplaces would be in the center of most cities to maximize exposure and access. It was the economic hub of most cities. Um, these marketplaces would drive investment, improve economic outcomes for citizens, and help the community grow and prosper. And government would help marketplaces by building infrastructure like roads and rails to help increase trade access and opportunities. So we asked ourselves, you know, what that help would look like in a digital world. And that was about 18 months ago, and then the pandemic hit. Um, and so we've been re reeling from that. So you might be asking kind of, why now? Well, 
<laughs> some of the data that informed uh, the, the brainstorming session was from 2019 and Deloitte Access Economics had looked into the Victorian startup ecosystem with a 20 year view on growth. They flagged a strong link between connected data initiatives and economic growth. And the Victorian government asked, what can we do to kind of expedite those connected data initiatives so we can accelerate that growth trajectory? That was what we were asking in 29, 2019. And it really stands up um, currently because we want to see what we can do to help the state's economic recovery due to the pandemic. And while there have been impacts to the economy, the analysis and the analysis definitely did not foresee a global pandemic. We were eager to understand what is actually happening within organizations and how they were impacted by the pandemic. So we reached out to Google Cloud and they had completed a very timely report looking into uh, organizations using APIs and the effect of the pandemic on them. And it turns out that three quarters of the organizations, and I'm sure many of these organizations are on the call right now, um, you continued your transformation despite the pandemic. What was really interesting for us was that 65% of those organizations actually accelerated their, those transformations. APIs are leading the way for these transformations because of the reasons that we're all familiar with. Um, we've, I'm sure we've heard lots of speakers uh, talk about this over the course of the past two days, but um, it's worth calling out that organizations, we all recognize that APIs are delivering better outcomes and experiences, both internally for our internal users, but also externally. They're creating massive value for their reusability and they facilitate integrations with external customers and partners. Now we dove into some more detailed responses um, from this report and many organizations have actually dedicated a specific API platform funding uh, initiative as part of this transformation. They've recognized the value in connecting with the outside world for new markets and new growth opportunities, including partnerships. So we've been speaking with Deloitte Digital and Google Cloud about this concept of an API marketplace, and they both stepped up and said they'd love to help deliver and develop the API marketplace proof of concept. We're very proud to announce that Deloitte Digital is our strategic delivery partner and Google Cloud is our technology platform partner. Now Deloitte Digital and Google Cloud have stepped up because they see the benefit for the technology community and the ecosystem. And they know that with connected data initiatives, a rising tide will lift all boats. So after the positive feedback from Deloitte Digital and Google Cloud, we then went out to speak with key industry players to get feedback directly from the horse's mouth, so to speak, to see what experiences they've had, as well as to get some feedback on the concept of the API marketplace. And so I'll take you through what we learned. Many organizations are absolutely undertaking long, complex transformation programs. I'm sure many people on the call, <laughs> I, I, I emphasize long and complex because they, uh, they always end up being a little bit more challenging than you expect. But the good news was that APIs are leading that change. Now, most of these transformation programs are based on modernizing legacy systems. So moving to the cloud um, and APIs are essential for these transformations. Now, the business cases for modernization are well known and the focus usually is on internal APIs. But the typically we're finding that um, they all often include external APIs as a key new revenue stream and they've positioned them at the back end of those transformation programs. And for good reason, it makes sense. You're not gonna have an external API uh, program stood up when you haven't finished moving your assets into the cloud. Now, generally we've seen budget shift and typically where you'd see R&D budgets on innovation, they've been allocated to those transformation programs given the new technologies being used in the organization and that modernization to the cloud. That is new for a lot of organizations. Now that means though, there's very little room for your traditional R&D. Also through our conversations with industry, we did pick up that traditionally closed off organizations are now looking for their next growth area and they're identifying opportunities and connected data and opening up those closed walls. So then we went out and we spoke directly with organizations that had stood up those dedicated API or developer portals. And we kind of asked them, why did you do that? What was, you know, what was your strategy behind doing this? 
And many organizations said, well, we created them with a view to monetize or create an ecosystem around um, our products, our data, our solutions. Now, the, the feedback we asked, uh, the feedback we got whenever we kind of digged a little bit deeper um, was that they weren't necessarily hitting their projected revenue targets. And that was due to underutilization and lower than expected transaction volumes. So the revenue targets weren't necessarily being met. And then on the uh, expense side, they're actually been finding it more costly to run due to the effort required to onboard new users. And this is usually because of the sensitivity of the data and you want it. There's a lot of um, due diligence that needs to be done to make sure that um, third parties are, are appropriately using that data and your uh, customer data and security is safe. They're also finding it more expensive to convert users because of a much higher than expected SEO spend. Now, this is attributed directly to a global advertising competition for very common search terms. You know, I'll pick on banks. So if you looked up bank API portal, good luck, you're going to get like thousands of hits. Now, discoverability is impacted by potential new users because of this stubborn problem. And so this directly impacts an API program's usage and user conversion potential. Now, finally, we also spoke with developers, our startups, and our scale-up community. And whenever it came to APIs and, and portals, um, there were two main pain points that they highlighted. And that some of these pain points actually were shared with providers as well. Now, the first one was around actually just discovering and finding new integrations and data sources. Discoverability was a huge problem when most providers are operating as islands. It makes discovery in a sea and an ocean of different um, common search terms very, very difficult. And then the second pain point was even when you find a potential integration, there's usually significant hurdles and barriers that need to be overcome before a developer can even test whether it's fit for purpose. Sometimes it's onerous terms and conditions. Other times there's complex commercial negotiations and commitments that need to be made before access is provided. Now, this is something we heard from providers as well when they spoke to looking for potential partnerships with other organizations. There may be a potential partnership concept and they would like to get their innovation team to kind of prototype a concept. But before that happens, uh, they'll reach out to that organization through the front door um, there's some challenging uh, conversations trying to find the right person within the organization uh, to speak with. Um, after you finally find that person, you obviously have to have your directors uh, have a chat to, to hear the pitch. And if you make it past that gate, it'll eventually head up uh, to the CXO level since it's a new partnership opportunity, due diligence needs to take place. Calendars kind of need to align like it's trying to get a Tetris on level nine, adding kind of weeks of delay. And this is before the devs have even seen whether it's feasible. Sorry for traumatizing anyone who's gone through this. Um, <laughs> this is just some of the feedback we've gotten and uh, um, we can relate to it uh, very strongly. So after all of that, sometimes the integration we find isn't even fit for purpose. And so all that time and cost incurred was wasted. Now, this is kind of manageable with your larger or well-funded organizations, but this simply is not the case with developers, startups, and scale-ups, where capital, time, and resources are very thin and need to be used effectively. Now, these two problems actually compound and have two side effects of their own. And one is that your prototyping costs end up being much higher than expected. And if the ROI isn't there, meaning that integration kind of didn't work out, then your company's growth suffers because you've gone down the wrong path. And then secondly, you kind of become a little bit gun shy whenever it comes to trying out new integrations or partnerships. And this means that we're seeing good ideas not being brought to fruition, resulting in a lack of innovation and opportunity. And I can personally attest to this. Like a few years ago, I'd come back after a six month trip around the world and a friend and I um, weren't, weren't working we're, and we started a side hustle looking at solving a problem by creating a digital service to automate a very boring task. I found the organization we wanted to work with had a developer portal, and I was even a customer of the organization. I tried for weeks to actually just get access to the dev portal, but because we didn't have a prototype to show, the organization wasn't really interested and we couldn't progress. It was a bit of a chicken and the egg problem, and it was a very frustrating experience and led to a huge amount of time spent on a really uh, crappy workarounds that didn't quite work and it led to really poor customer service. So we ended up just kind of abandoning it. 
So to recap, um, we've seen the pandemics accelerate transformation projects in organizations and APRs are leading the technology. Our APIs of the technology leading that, that change. We're seeing strong links between connected data initiatives and economic outcomes. Organizations that have API programs are having challenges with utilization and discovery and conversion of new users. And developers are having challenges discovering and testing new data sources. We asked what could government do to help organizations, developers, startups, and scale-ups. And a bit of a slow burn, but I hope that context, industry background, and purpose that went into the design and, and the problem of the of what um, we're trying to solve here with the API marketplace shows that government is approaching projects very differently, and we're modernizing. It's all about how government can best deliver for the digital age, and now I'm really excited to get into the details of the API marketplace. So thanks for sticking through it. So the API Marketplace is a free Victorian government platform built on the latest Google Cloud Apogee technology. It's designed to make APIs easy to discover and use. We want to improve discoverability for both providers and developers, while at the same time reduce the amount of time and effort it takes pro uh, developers to prototype an integration. So essentially, we'll allow providers to deploy APIs to a central platform so developers have a single place to find new integrations from diverse industries. They'll be able to quickly prototype an implementation to prove out a concept. And providers will have visibility over which APIs are getting traction so they can it, it can help focus your resource and development efforts. Reducing barriers for developers to discover and prototype new, API, new APIs will open new opportunities for providers to get access to new markets and users that they historically wouldn't be able to access. This also benefits developers because they can then deliver more value to their users as well. And we will be acting as a neutral channel to facilitate new connections and drive the connected economy forward. So you may be asking, you know, why did the Victorian government build this? Well, we heard from organizations who were supportive of this kind of concept. There was apprehension around the entity that would operate a centralized directory. There were security, privacy, and commercial concerns that dominated, but there are also concerns around quality, um, intellectual property protection, uh, potentially restrictive terms or conditions leading to a loss of control of, of your data, um, a lack of visibility on operations and potentially unfair listing incentives. Many organizations we spoke to in the midst of these large transformation programs did also see uh, APIs as a, uh, uh, external APIs as an opportunity, but there was hesitancy surrounding opportunity availability and concerns about budget and resourcing required to stand up an external program. We're not just building a platform here, we're actively speaking with organizations to promote and support connected data initiatives. We have numerous initiatives from different government departments to support businesses and the developer startup and, eco, uh, startup and scale up ecosystem. And the API marketplace is just the latest initiative that we're supporting. Trusting that government is supporting a fair and open connected data platform helps reduce costs associated by going at it alone. The Victorian government wants to enable businesses to succeed in the digital economy, and we're committing resources to help drive that innovation and economic activity in the sector. So to address these concerns, one of the central pillars of the marketplace is neutrality in its operation, making sure that all participants are equal, treated equally and equitably to increase collaboration and opportunities for everyone. By operating as a neutral party without a commercial interest, we can help unblock opportunities and expedite collaboration. We are not competing against an existing provider's portal or API program, but we're complementing and supporting that program by acting as a channel for growth. So similar to how government built roads and rail to improve market access and opportunity, we've built the API marketplace to help improve access and usage of APIs. We believe that connected data will be key in driving economic growth forward and we're aligning support to encourage a thriving digital economy, a key goal for Digital Victoria. Apologies for the slide, I'm not sure why it's decided to act all janky. Um, but bringing us back to Digital Victoria's design, test, learn, scale process, we've just deployed a proof of concept or minimum viable product for our product people on the call. Um, of the API marketplace, it's currently a closed beta and we're onboarding some early participants to test the platform, provide feedback and help prioritize a roadmap for that scaled up version. 
We've been collaborating with other agencies across the Victorian government to start making the API and developer community aware of the platform. And once we're finished this onboarding and feedback phase, we're extremely keen to host a hackathon with the tech community to put our rapid prototyping functionality to the test. Now, since we're at the test and learn phase uh, for the proof of concept, we felt that inviting the attendees of our presentation at API days would be a great opportunity to get more of our community involved with the API marketplace. The feedback will determine what features and functionality would be needed to build a scaled up version. And I realize that there are attendees on the call outside of Victoria. If you head to the website uh, below on the right hand side, we have links out to Launch Victoria and Invest Victoria, which can help you get established in Victoria, including business support and programs. We recognize that APIs are on the internet and by that nature means accessible globally. globally. Now, while we're focusing on Victoria, the platform will be open to those outside Victoria. Now, before we get to, we wrap the presentation, we get to questions. I actually have questions for the audience. Does your organization have an API program or a developer portal? Are you having challenges with discoverability or transaction volumes? Are you looking for new partnership opportunities? Are you, maybe you're a developer, a startup or a scale up looking for new features uh, to integrate to, uh, new partnerships or collaborations? Do you want a quick and easy way to prototype an integration so you can validate it's fit for purpose without spending a huge amount of time trying to get access? Well, we're excited to offer you an opportunity to register interest in participating. Um, the Victorian government is here to support you and we're committed to accelerating connected data initiatives so we can unlock economic growth and opportunities for everyone. So I invite you, please head to data.vic.gov.au slash API dash marketplace and leave your details. I'll be in touch with you and I'd love to get your feedback on the platform and how we can help support our providers and developers to accelerate economic opportunities for all. So thank you very much for your time. Um, we're really excited to be here and we hope you enjoyed the talk. Like I said, if you've got APIs or you wanna collaborate with other APIs, I hope some of this talk resonated with you. As the conference itself has grown, I think it's clear that we're on the early days of opportunity and we really encourage you to register your input and I can't wait to hear what you think of the platform. Thank you very much and I'm happy to take, uh, Paul and I are happy to take any questions you have. Okay, great. Thank, thank you, Matthew and Carolyn. That's a very exciting initiative. And I'm sure uh, everyone in our audience is keen to get involved, uh, both providers and consumers, as we've seen. So I'm wondering, the um, you said it's non-production data. So is this a, a self-contained um, uh, platform or sandbox? So if I'm a provider and I have uh, non-production data that I want to get in there. How would how might that look? Have you got um, some of the details around that? Yeah, sure. Um, so being government, uh, data uh, privacy and uh, policies quite uh, quite quite like we're kind of apprehensive around having personal identifiable information yes. um, that that we don't own. Um, so we kind of just took that out of the equation. And so what we're, we're inviting providers to do is deploy non-production APIs that are essentially just a mirror of what a production, what their production API is. It's really to kind of have that sandbox environment so developers can quickly get in and test it out. And then we'll forward those, we'll basically refer those developers to the providers to go through their normal onboarding process. So we didn't want to essentially um, interfere with an existing provider's, uh, you know, onboarding and um, uh, sandbox, like their, their process. Yep. By this, we kind of had to draw the line at non-production data. Right. Okay. And do you see do you see the marketplace kind of evolving into supporting production data, or would would that always be kind of a step that happens after the initial handshake, if you like? It's a, it's, all, it's a great question, and it it speaks to the test and learn phase, right? And so yeah. we've kind of come up with uh, we, we we've made some assumptions, we've made some kind of we've drawn some a few lines in the sand, but they're not really drawn in that well, right? Like it's right. it's a light it's a light draw it's a light draw. So if we got a whole bunch of feedback from um, from our providers and developers saying, hey, it, you know, this is actually impeding, uh, like this isn't actually working, or there, you know, you might have to. We, we suggest that you do this, then, then we're absolutely open to it. But um, we think we have the right balance. But again, we're, we're, happy, to, we're happy to have people come up, sign up, and, uh, and provide that feedback directly. 
Yeah, great. Yes, yeah, so I think I'm, I'm not aware of anything else in Australia that's like this. Um, I'm aware of some sandboxes that people have set up overseas, um, some fintech sandboxes, some government mm. sandboxes, but this is this is really unique in Australia. And I think it's some of the some of the other talks we've had in the, the um, conference so far have been um, have been talking about the need to educate um, people on providing and consuming APIs. And I think this would be an awesome um, uh, step in that direction of educating people. Um, we've got a, a question in the audience um, from uh, someone named Jethma. Uh, what sort of partners are you looking for? Uh. <laughs> we're looking. Uh, we're looking for um, both businesses that are established brands and that probably have a decent suite of APIs um, that provide a good business opportunity for the. Um, developer community um, and we're also after the medium to small businesses that are interested in kicking the tyre um, because whether you're a developer or medium to small business um, I think there's going to be opportunity either for getting better return on investment for where you've already invested in APIs tech um, but as Matt was saying um, for the developer so that you can um, uh, try and test your ideas and get connected up to um, the medium and the large brands that can help you with your ideas. Okay, great. Well, it sounds like a really exciting initiative and I would encourage everyone in our audience to get on board. Um, I think we, we've run out of time now. It's time for uh, the afternoon break. Um, so thanks for joining us and thanks for being part of API day. Thanks all. And thanks, thanks everyone for sticking thanks. around. Excellent. Thank you. Bye.